Hey everybody, it's Chief Meteorologist Brad Benovich. Well, let's talk about the risk for strong storms heading our way later today, but I will emphasize this. We saw some devastation to the west yesterday and last night. Nothing remotely that severe is heading our way, but it doesn't mean we couldn't see a strong storm or two, but the level of severity is going to be much, much lower. So this is not going to be anything like what happened to our west. Here's a look at that system now. It is weakened slowly overnight. It has taken time, but it's still producing some pretty strong storms in parts of Tennessee right now. You can see the whole line pushing east. I'll, I'll stop it at the current time. And this little cluster over here in Tennessee is producing some severe weather from Knoxville down to Chattanooga. It, the line is becoming more linear, which means the risk for tornadoes is much lower because it's more of a straight line event. But it doesn't mean within this line that you couldn't see what we call uh, bow echoes turn into little uh, what we call bookend vortices. Sometimes in these little nooks and crannies of the line, you can see rotation. The other thing that kind of helped us out, and it is warming up right now, I'm going to quickly show you the surface temperatures, uh, just to show you that it has stayed pretty chilly on the east side of the mountains. You can see temperatures over here have basically been stuck in the 50s and 60s. So the air mass here is not that warm, humid air mass that's getting pulled up ahead of the front like we're seeing. Look at that. It's in the 70s in parts of uh, you know eastern Tennessee right now. The other factor is the dew point. Uh, dew points have crept up a little bit during the 60s. The atmosphere just is not as conducive for severe weather east of the mountains uh, like we're seeing on the west side of the mountains. And just to reiterate that, this is the severe weather outlook for today. I'm actually going to turn the satellite imagery off so it's a little bit easier to see. You can see the medium risk is off to our south and west and for the for the western carolinas we're in the yellow it's a low risk and the risk of tornadoes within that is even lower this is the tornado risk and i'm going to turn the radar off just for a second the risk for tornadoes in the the dark brown there that's a that's a five percent chance of a tornado within 25 miles of the yellow is a two percent chance so uh, even though you don't see color over our area it's technically between zero and one percent so we call that a non-zero tornado threat. But overall, that that's a good sign that we don't have a huge risk uh, for tornadoes. Our main risk is going to be straight line winds. That's a look at the risk right now. And again, here's where the line is. Let's look at the future cast. All right, so here's a look at the future cast. We'll show you how this unfolds. You can see the line over in Tennessee crosses the mountains. We're going to go to about two o'clock. So this is when we're going to see the line begin to move into the mountains. You see it lining up there. We'll go to about three o'clock. And then four o'clock. So four o'clock is when we start to see it kind of cross over the mountains. And the line to watch is the leading edge. It's not the whole line. It's going to be along this leading edge here. And I think areas like right there and these little Boeing segments, you could have some enhanced damaging winds there. But also that's the area where you could see a quick spin up if there is going to be an isolated tornado. But again, the tornado risk overall is low. You can see by six or seven o'clock, this is crossing um, the Piedmont and then pushing off to the east. And then it's long gone with just rain. Again, there's rain behind the leading edge. It's the leading edge we're worried about with this system. It's not the rain behind it. So everything right here that is weakening is a good sign that actually shows that things are beginning to weaken. And then we go towards the overnight hours and it kind of falls apart quickly. Let me quickly show you um, a look at those updraft helicities, which is something I show you quite a bit to see if there's any signs of rotation within that line. You could see as we go through 5 p.m., 6, 7 o'clock, we'll go all the way through. So if you look closely, there's not a ton, but there is one little segment here that has a little bit of rotation. But honestly, on the scale, that's pretty low. I mean, just to give you, not to compare apples to oranges, because last night we saw rotational tracks that were the highest I'd ever seen. Um, so it's not the same setup, but there is still a hint of a little one right there and certainly something to keep an eye on. So again, the timing for all of this um, is in that four, five, six, seven o'clock time frame. Notice we do have our highest risk is going to be for damaging straight line winds. The tornado risk, you know, is going to be along that leading edge from west to east. So this would be from west to east, basically in our in our area. And again, the risk is low. It's not zero. Um, so I would emphasize more the wind with this setup because the winds look pretty potent as the system moves through. And let's take a real quick look at those winds. So again, this is a really bright uh, image here, but this is basically wind speed. You can see the, uh, the, the legend on the top. So the blue is 10 to 20. The green is 20 to 30. The yellow or orange mustard color, 30 to 40. Then the red is 40 to 50. And these are wind gusts, not sustained winds. So you can see some really strong winds 
move into the mountains. And then as the front crosses the Piedmont, you see a bunch of yellow there. So even outside the thunderstorms, you know, we could have um, some wind speeds, and I'm going to plot some on here, that are in the 30 to 40 range. So I would be very, very cautious just for the winds in general today. So if you have Christmas decorations out there, you know, you're definitely going to want to make sure they're tied down because as the front moves through, the winds will be strong. And then once it moves through, they begin to calm down overnight, except for the mountains where the northwest flow wind becomes the, the dominant part of this whole thing. All right, so we'll recap. There's our line of storms. It's moving steadily east. The good news that it is pretty much linear, which means the risk for tornadic storms has decreased tremendously. And again, just to recap, the yellow is the low risk. The orange is the medium risk. The highest risk of severe is going to stay to our south and west. Doesn't mean we won't see some here in the Carolinas, but it is a day just to stay weather where our timing again, three, four, five, six, seven o'clock into the evening. Again, I'll throw this graphic up because I think it tells a story. Of course, make sure you download the WCNC Charlotte app. We'll keep you up to date throughout the day if there's watches or warnings. Again, uh, we, we really think about and pray about all the damage done in the Ohio and Mississippi valleys, but um, we are not going to see anything that severe here, not even remotely that severe. That was a all-time tornado outbreak for us. We're kind of seeing the remnants of it and mainly in the form of wind, and that's what's heading our way later today. Be safe and stay weather aware and stay up to date for any continuing updates on this situation as it moves in.